everyone today I'm going to be doing this um, page not all of it um, some of this page this is from the um, 2021 weekly planner just going to zoom in a little bit and what I'm going to do actually I thought I would just talk you through how I might start a page like this thinking about what to do with it now I would probably think I'm either going to do all the leaves the same color or the flowers the same color or a a sort of like uh, similar colours, so maybe just a pink and purple, shades of blue, um, oranges and yellow, something like that. So I would think about the colours, or maybe the pots all the same colour, something like that. That's how I would approach it. I'm actually going to do start with this pot here, um, just to give you a little idea of how I colour this, because I think it's quite a fun one to do. I've got my Arteza Premium pencils out today. Um, all spread out ready and I'm actually going to grab some blues to do this pot just because I'm just looking at them thinking hmm, that's a nice blue so I'm going to start and this one is called the Mykonos blue and I'm just going to start by doing the whole pot in a light layer so I'm holding my pencil quite far up I'm holding it at a, at a angle so that I'm colouring on the side of the lead rather than going in like that so that I'm just going to try to get a nice even layer of blue. Now we're going to add some um, shading and things to this um, afterwards but the idea is I just want to get, I do, do have different approaches really, sometimes I go in first with a darker colour and shade in the areas that I want darker and sometimes I just start off with a layer of a basic colour and then add the darker bits later so it depends what mood I'm in I don't know don't think there's a right and a wrong way obviously if there's a way you prefer then go for it you know we're all different in the way we colour there's no right or wrong way I'm gonna sneeze <laughs> Excuse me. Gosh, sorry. Ooh, that was a surprise. <laughs> I hope that didn't make you all jump. Anyway, you're colouring away. Now I've gone over that leaf a little bit. Now what happens there is I've gone over the leaf. So then I start thinking, okay, I could either erase it. It's quite small. Just checking you're all in shot. I can't see my screen very well. There we go. Um, um, so I've gone over that leaf so I think well what's my solution I, as I say I could erase it but it's quite small so the other solution is to make sure that the colour I use for that leaf is darker than the blue <coughs> excuse me I don't know where my voice went then <laughs> is darker than the blue that I've used so that it, it can just cover it and the joy with the Arteza pencils Arteza? Arteza? I don't know. Is that they're vibrant. You don't need to put down a lot of pressure or layers to get a nice vibrant colour. In fact, quite the opposite. It's not always that easy to get a nice light colour like I am doing at the moment. And I'm not very even. See, it's a lot darker here where there's a little gap because I've had to sort of slow down and colour around things. So... Uh, it's uh, it's about finding a different technique for a different pencil. You know, with the polychromos, for example, they're, uh, they don't come down so vibrant and you have to... That grammar wasn't very good, was it? Uh, so you have to press a bit harder or, more preferably, add lots of layers. And I find with that you can get some really nice effects. Um, and I do like that but it's slower so it depends if you want to do something intricate or whether you just want to finish a picture more quickly and my idea for using the Artezas for this one was partly because I've not used them in this book so I wanted to try them out and also I thought they'd be a little bit quicker to uh, get this one done when there's a lot of detail so I'm just hurrying you can see how I can just really go quite fast on some of these areas. I'm not expecting you to necessarily keep up with me um, 
if you're trying to colour along. It's also a little confusing with the Arteza Premium because there are two sets with different colours and colour names. Now it isn't that they're sort of set one and set two as it were, it seems as far as I can gather from talking to customer services and doing research that there's an older set and a newer set and if you order from Amazon you get one set and if you order directly from Arteza you get a different set and I can't remember whether mine are the old or the new set or the and I don't know whether it differs with US and UK purchases as well so I'm not sure okay I'm just got to blow my nose I'm really sorry after that sneeze right the next stage is to put in some shading and shadows. I'm going to continue with this pencil and do it. Oh, I don't, let's try and keep it straight for you. There we go. In between where these lines are that Johanna's drawn for us, because I'm thinking that this pot, each of these is like a slightly circular piece. Um, I can't really, a curve, like, like it's lots of these tubes all on top of each other. Um, like a coil pot I suppose so in here this bit would be dented in more so if I go across here with a darker really pushing hard you see my fingers much nearer to the end of the pencil and I'm pushing hard onto the page so that will separate these two pieces but that isn't enough um, let me zoom in a little and show you let's pull it down a bit so I also need to take this up a little bit towards the center and down from the top so I'm fading the color towards the middle so the center bit is still going to be that light color that I started with but the edges are going to be a bit dark it's a little bit messy with the Arteza I find it I find it can be a bit messy it's not you can't get a nice evenness to it but actually I quite like that I like that effect and you can hopefully see that it's starting to look like it's a sort of more curved piece I hope that's giving that illusion trying to do the whole line for you so you can see and trying not to go over the top of all the leaves but I'm failing at that and I've seen this pot this picture the one in the book not the one on the kind of sorry I was out of shot there wasn't I that was really useful I'm really sorry so um, this end for me looks better than this end and I'm thinking it's because that line's slightly smaller. It's darker at the top. So I'm just going to go through and just go over the rest again. You may need to sharpen your pencil for this bit but not for the initial stage. So, yeah, so um, these are a little messier, but I quite like that. I've got quite a messy style, I think, so it suits me. So I'm just bringing that together a little more and now having a look. And I think that looks quite rounded. So, and you see how the one underneath just looks flat. So now we're going to repeat that all the way down. Um, so... going along here and trying to fade it towards the centre a little and then along here really push down along this bottom now we can bring in a darker blue if we think it needs it but I'm just going to persevere with this one just checking you can see I've got such a habit of um, colouring off camera which isn't very useful is it So we're going towards the middle. I can, 
You can do a bit from each direction, from each side, I find that quite useful. It's lovely and sunny again today. I like sunshine at this time of year. Um, oh, as it gets a little bit towards the end of the year and um, towards summer, I don't like it as much, it gets too hot for me. Now that one to me doesn't look as three-dimensional as the top one and I'm not really sure why. Um, I think maybe it needs to be a bit darker at the bottom. So sometimes it's a matter of having a bit of a fiddle with it until it comes to how you want it to look. And sometimes it's a matter of just doing them all and then it sort of works and looks better. I think this top one is thicker, which has helped a bit as well. That line there isn't very well defined either, which may not be helping us. See, what we can do is we can grab a darker blue or even a black. I'm just having a look at the blues that we've got in this set. So I'm going to grab the indigo blue. And we can really go into this space and just put in a nice dark line to really emphasise that shadow and that helps us a lot. And here, and I hopefully you'll see that that has made quite a difference. And the idea is that I'm going to go through the whole pot with the same um, method. I'll show you another one. I don't think I need to show you the whole pot or else it's going to get a little dull. So here again, darker here, and then fading towards the centre. We've got this plant in the way which makes it a little tricky. We just have to use our imagination and think about where the centre is going to be. We can pretty much guess that. Just going to sharpen. Um, yeah. Now these are triangular pencils. People do wonder about how to sharpen them. I use my Stedler Norris Club Sharpener, which is the one that Stedler recommend for sharpening. Oh, I've just lost my um, lead. Oh, my sharpener's too full. Hold on. Sorry, as always, when the sharpener's too full, the um, the lead breaks. That's what I always find happens. Just trying to put my sharpener back together backwards. So anyway, Stedler recommends this for their um, their triangular pencils. So I use it for these, and it works perfectly well. I know some people worry about triangular and whether it'll work. This keeps breaking though. Make sure I've got some bits stuck in the uh, in the sharpener. What I do is, if there's some lead stuck in the sharpener, I poke it out with a uh, another pencil or a mechanical pencil or a you know a, like a graphite pencil. Whoa! Just, just dropped out onto my burn. Now, hopefully, we this time we'll have some better luck with sharpening. There we go. Right, let's get rid of that. Okay. So back to it. Sorry about that disruption. I should really edit these things out, but uh, I'm not. Uh, I'm always worried that I'll edit out the wrong bit. So I rather not do that. Unless I suppose I could pause the film. So, as you can see more layers towards the and the heavier pressure towards the line there and then reducing it towards the middle and what I'm going to do now is pause the cat film and finish off this whole pot on my own and then show you um, how we do some shadows behind these things that are in front of it so uh, if you, uh, I shall just pause 
and uh, take my time and uh, and come back to you. Right, we finished that. Uh, I finished the whole pot now, um, like this. I probably would fiddle around with it a little bit more, but I thought I would just crack on with the next bit for you. Now, what I was saying was that I'm going to have a look at doing some shadowing. Um, see, this pot is in front of this pot, of course, but um, you know, when it's drawn on the page, it looks very flat. So we need to sort of make an impression that it's in front, and to do that, we can put some shadows. Now, what we have to decide first is which way the light is coming from, because the shadows have to fall in the correct direction. Normally, I would do it from straight in front, because that just makes it easier for me. So we're on the slant, aren't we? But I think for this one, I have the light coming in from a bit of an angle, and then we can get our shadow coming down this side, because uh, there's no pot behind this side, so we can draw some shadow here. So I'm using the darker blue that we picked up before, which is the indigo blue, and I'm just going to go all the way along the edge of here with a really hard application of that dark blue. It can be any dark blue. and that makes a really definite shadow. But there is going to be some shadow on the ground as well. Now, I haven't thought about a background, a ground, anything. So what I'm going to do is just grab my dark grey, which is in this case a charcoal, and just continue that shadow under the pot here, on the ground, and just put a bit under here as well, or else it's going to look a little bit strange that there's only shadow under that one and that just helps to sort of sit it on the ground and then we have to look at all the rest of the plant so we've got our pot here providing a shadow so we're also this um, leaf will be as well just getting my head a bit closer because it's a, a variegated edge leaf so it's a little tricky to see and this leaf here and then the whole of everything that's on the sort of right hand side the plant so shadow on the right hand side of this stem can you see the whole of that yeah and around here and here and all the way across there's a lot of blue on this plant where I've gone over the edge but once we uh, once I color it in it will be gone and it's quite difficult with a piece like this I have put it underneath and there is sort of that side, sort of changes side, it's a bit odd. And down here as well. So that is our main sort of shadow and hopefully that makes that pot sit out. Again we've got bits here which aren't against anything so they haven't got any background, um, haven't got any shadow. If we pull this across we will then continue with here doing the same thing with all of our other plants as well and it isn't too tricky it doesn't take too long you do need a sharp pencil mine's getting blunt I'm just going to sharpen it a little sorry I just realized I did a bit out of shot um, we'll just do the top bits and then I'll move it down so around there and there now these really tiny bits like these little tiny these you can just do a little tiny bit just a little nod, sort of thing. But try not to, and these tiny balls, they're just really tricky. Just do your best. I think the original picture in World of Flowers is a little bit bigger than this. Be a little bit easier. It's okay. Just do your best. And we're all learning. Nobody is perfect. Oh, that's good with a bit more colouring in. I know that's the wrong shade of blue, but hey hey. Yeah, as I say, nobody's perfect and we're all developing our own styles at doing things. Right, let's push that up so you can see the bottom. Oh, sorry, I've got a cable behind my tripod, it's getting in my way. Okay, so we're doing this bit. So we're not doing any of this side of the pot because um, the, sh the light's falling that way. So everything on the right hand side. So 
So uh, yeah, it's uh, and when you actually colour in the plant and flowers, it makes quite a difference to it as well. But hopefully, you can see that that brings it up off the page just a little bit more than it was before. So uh, that makes it look slightly more three-dimensional. I'm going to leave it there. I'm not going to colour the rest. There's a big old page. My plan for the page, in case you are wondering where to go next, is to do the other two vases in the same two blues and then do all the flowers, probably in a pink, and all the leaves in a nice mid lightish green colour, not an olive, not dark, not a sage, um, probably choosing like the apple green, the spring green, those sorts of greens. So that's my plan for the rest of the page and I probably won't do lots more um, sort of shadowing on the rest, not a lot. I'll probably just leave it to the, I've just realised I need to do this one now. I'll um, probably just leave it at that, which is the right hand side. You ask yourself when it's coming in at that angle, you just do both up and above and below. So that's that. And I might emphasise these shadows a bit more, depending on how it looks once I've coloured in the um, the flowers and things. But that's me. I hope that was useful. Um, it was quite a sort of quickie, really. We didn't do a lot of the page, but I hope I thought it might just be a little bit different for you. So uh, I'll just move that into shot so you can have a good old look at, uh, at what was going on. So thank you for watching, um, hope it was useful and enjoyable and happy colouring.